Hello, my name is Eugene Kappen. This is Kappen Design TV. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create the Cyclops optic beam. Now, if you've seen any of the X-Men movies, you will have seen Cyclops shooting a big laser out of his face and it looks really cool and it just destroys a bunch of stuff. Well, anyway, I'm going to be showing you how to do the effect of him shooting a laser out of his face. Now, I don't have any footage from the movie but I did go to a convention last year and I took this shot of this amazing cosplayer who looks just like Cyclops. It's dead ringer. I love it. And we have these 50 frames of movement in which he's going to be shooting a laser out of his face. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is make the visor light up. And it's actually a very simple effect. We just need a red solid. And we're gonna go ahead and turn off the visibility. And then on frame one, uh, we are going to mask the area in which the visor is shooting the laser out. Now, if we turn it back on, okay, it's awesome, right? Now, what we have to do is hit the mask path, and then as we go through, we have to move the mask over to fill that area. and it will require us moving the different parts as the timeline goes on. And now this, this is going to be a little time consuming But every 10 frames or so, we're going to create a new keyframe and we're going to move it over until we've successfully filled out the entire timeline. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and skip past to the end of this step. Now, once the visor is completely done, you'll be able to scrub through the timeline and it'll fit perfectly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-compose and I'll call it visor inside and I will move all the attributes into the new layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it and I'm going to change the mask feather on both to 10 and 20% or 10 and 20 pixels. That way when it goes through, it has a bit of a glow. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more and I'm gonna go ahead and make it 30 pixels. There we go. Not bad, okay. Go back to the outer comp. Awesome, it's glowing at this point. So the next thing to do is to actually create the beam itself now that we have the visor lit up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the visor inside and I'm going to go ahead and grab that red layer again. I'm gonna turn it off and I'm going to create the beam. And I'm going to create some distance outside of the actual composition itself. And so when we turn everything back on, it looks like it's actually coming out. Now, just like the previous step, 
we're going to go ahead and we are going to create the motion. We're going to continue creating a mask path, which will follow the way the visor is aimed. Yeah, his head is just elevated weirdly. So 10 more frames. Move it along the timeline. Until we get to the end. This step should be just a little bit faster than it was before. Now this, this last one is probably going to be just on itself, just a little. All right, so when we turn that layer back on with the visor and we scrub through it, now it's just a shape and that's fine. So the next thing we're going to do is pre-compose it just like we did before. I'm going to call it beam. Uh, make sure you have the move all attributes to the new composition. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it two, three, four, five times. And we'll change the feather on each going up in increments of 10. Thirty pixels. Then fifty. So it has that nice beam glow. Now I'm going to duplicate it one more time and I'm going to right click layer styles color overlay and I'm going to change it to white. Now it has like a red glow and a white inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the mask expansion. I'm going to shrink it just a little. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to move it in just a little bit on each one. So when you're facing it, it has this white burning and on the outside it has, like it goes away. All right, now if we go back to our original composition, that's awesome, right? Beam. So the next thing we need to do is to add a lens flare. Now, you can use pretty much any lens flare type. I, myself, like to use optical flares. It's a video co-pilot plugin. So solid, go to black. I'm gonna call it flare. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab, go to video co-pilot optical flare 
toggle on my switch, turn the mode to screen, and I'm going to put it right in front of Scott's face. Now I'm going to turn down, go down to position and center, and I'm just going to go through. put that center point at the middle of Cyclops' visor. Now, this flare doesn't really look like something Scott would actually have. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll grab just a glow, some iris, um, let's put in a beam streak, and I'm going to turn it to red. Now when it has everything on it, I'm just going to put the flare underneath everything. You know, actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to get rid of this little center point. There we go. I'm going to turn up the brightness just a little bit. Yeah, I really want that beam to be, to, like, drowned out. So I'm actually going to change the brightness from 250 at the very beginning to where it gets to about 30 frames. I'm gonna go back to 100 because you're not looking directly at it anymore. Now, this beam, it looks awesome, but it doesn't have that like Cyclops flare that it normally does. And actually, you know, what? I think this actually I think this beam is just a little too big. So I'm going to go ahead and move it in just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to feather it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, there we go. So, I think it's still just too like straight and narrow for what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the visor and the beam and I'm going to pre-compose it to be Cyclops beam. If we go back, it's all in there, but inside of the beam, I'm going to go ahead and get an adjustment layer. Get a displacement map. So inside of the Cyclops beam, I'm going to go ahead and grab, and I'll change this. It's going to be fractal noise. So what we're gonna do is grab Fractal Noise, drop it onto our layer, and then we are going to pull the contrast way up. And then get the complexity way up. I actually want a little bit of noise. Um, we're gonna take the mode, and we're gonna turn it to screen. And we're going to take the adjustment layer, turn it to fractal noise. And then what I'm going to do is grab one of the beam masks, copy it, come over to fractal noise, drop it on. And that way it affects the whole thing. Now if 
we go back to Cyclops. Sweet beam, dude. You know what I think this looks like our Cyclops. I mean, if you go into like a Google search and you take a look, it's a white beam, red, red glow, and we are done. Now, you can get a little, you can style it a little bit how you, you know, want it. I mean, if I go to the comic book version, I have this like disorientation going on inside the beam. But if you go to the movies, it's just like a straight beam. It's all focused. Mine, it's, it blasts outwards a little bit. It's not as nearly as focused as in the movies, but that's perfectly fine. We got the glow, we got the afterburn for it. And that is Cyclops in a nutshell. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you learned something, give it a like button. If you want to learn more, I should be doing more X-Men tutorials very, very soon. Uh, releasing them closer to when X-Men Apocalypse actually comes out. I cannot wait for that movie. I'm so excited. Anyway, um, stay in touch and I'll see you in the next video.